Okay, happy times. Let's have a look at this guy, right? Now, this particular area is interesting, and there are two ways that we can approach it, and they're kind of equally valid. I will show you both, okay? Have a look. Um, again, just like before, the one thing I'm missing from the diagram is the actual area that we're, um, that we're supposed to be calculating. Where is the actual area? <laughs> right there. Okay, now, there's, there's two parts, aren't there? So first there's this valley bit that you're talking about, so yeah. That's fine, okay, got that one there. But there's another area, isn't there? So there's, yeah, there's, it's the molehill, okay? So it's a composite area, so you've got, you've got these two slices. Again, I'm going to name them, right? So I'm going to call this A1 and this one A2. And how do I work out this wow. area? So, yes? First of all, how is the A1 bound between that yeah. and Y is the Yeah, okay, so you can see you've got one, two, three, four things what? that are your boundaries, right? So there's the graph, then there's this horizontal line, and then there's both axes, oh. both axes. So if I say to you, okay, I have one, two, three, like and, and, oh. where shall I put this one? Uh, I'll put it over here, four lines, right? And I say, tell me the areas that are bounded by those four lines, okay? You can see this area over here has nothing to do with that last line that I drew, but it's still bounded, right? It's still a closed area that I can talk about, okay? So in the same way, even though A1 has nothing to do with that Y equals nine line, good pickup, it's still bounded by this guy and the coordinate axes, the X and the Y, okay? In exactly the same way that A2 has nothing to do with the X axis, but it's still included within the boundaries that I'm interested in. Right, so having just made a mess of my working space, how do I work out these areas? A1's pretty easy, okay? A1 is pretty straightforward. Um, you do need to know some boundaries, don't you? It's not too hard to work out what the x-intercept is though. It's, it's negative one, okay? Because all you have to solve is for y equals zero, you get x cubed is negative one, x is negative one. So it's not hard to work out A1 right off the bat. Integral from? Negative one. Negative one to zero. Okay, uh, here's my function, x cubed plus 1 with respect to x, okay, dx. Integrand up to the primitive function, which gives me x to the 4 on 4 plus x from negative 1 to 0. Okay, I'll evaluate it at the upper bound, which is 0, that gives me 0. And then I'll evaluate it at my lower bound, which gives me, that's a quarter minus one, that looks like three quarters to me. You happy with that? Look okay. Great, area one is fine. Area two though, you have to be a little more careful with, okay? Now, I've been talking a lot about this dx thing, right? And where it came from. It started from that, just that little horizontal width. But we saw it meant more than that, right? It also meant with respect to x, like that's the variable I'm looking for, okay? It also means, in this case, it binds us to the x-axis, right? It's the area underneath here bound to this x-axis. So if I integrated, for instance, if I were to integrate from naught to, what's the x value that corresponds to that guy? It's going to be 2, because 2 cubed plus 1 is 9. If I go from naught to 2, and I integrate x squared plus 1 with respect to x, I'm not going to get a 2. What am I going to get? <laughs> yeah, the other part, right? I'm going to get this guy, I'll just put it in dots. This guy down here, that's not what I want. That's not A2. But it's not hard to go from that guy to get A2. What is the difference between them? Yeah, very good. I have this rectangle here, right? I know what its width is. I know what its height is. So therefore, A2 is the difference between those. I would say A2 is 9, sorry, it's a bad 9. 9 times 2, take away that integral. But can't you like integrate? Yeah. Like, uh, we're going to talk about that. We'll talk about that in a minute. Okay. Spoilers, okay? This is, this is me considering the way I would normally approach it, which is with respect to x, okay? I do have the function in terms of x, so I might as well. Okay. All right, now I've got 18. I've already worked out what the primitive function is, which is nice. So I've got x to the 4 on 4 plus x from 0 to 2. 18, take away, all right, I'll evaluate at my upper bound first, which gives me 16 on 4, which is 4 plus 2, take away 0. Yeah? 
happy times. That's six. So this is twelve. Okay. Yep. Is, is there another way to do it? Yes. And I'll show you in a minute. So just before I finished, that that's it, right? The total area is the sum of those. Uh, let's see here. A one, kinda. Yeah. Um, yeah, it does. Um, twelve and three quarters units. Squared. What is this graph? Okay. 